David Bowie is my favorite artist of all time. What, you want more? What else can I say? Do I really need to tell you who David Bowie is or why I love him so much? I'm totally not hiding the fact that I couldn't think of a good intro for this video. Well, I guess I could say this. I got a new microphone and interface recently and I decided I wanted to start making top 10 lists. I know they're a bit trivial and everything is subjective, but there's this fun and appeal to ranking things, I can't explain it. And when I decided to do this, I knew I'd want to do David Bowie first as he's my favorite singer and means so much to me. I knew it'd be a good challenge because I love David Bowie so much, there would be so much to cut from this list. Only 20 songs? That's too hard, mate. So I decided to set myself a rule. I only pick songs that were released as singles and or featured on best of compilations. I guess kind of like how Tom the Shadows does his best of lists. You could say this is less of a top 20 favorite Bowie songs and more of a top 20 best David Bowie hits. The deep cuts, the songs that don't get mentioned. Anyways, without further ado, here is my top 20 best David Bowie hit songs. So David Bowie has done a lot of soundtrack work for other projects, most famously the Labyrinth soundtrack, you have songs like This Is Not America with Pat Metheny. But if you were to ask me what my favorite song for a soundtrack, movie, show, or whatever that he did, I would have to go with Cat People. With Georgia Moroda producing, the song just sounds incredible. It's creepy and mysterious, but it's epic as well. The percussion and the synths go so well together. When the female backing vocals kick in and lead into this romantic guitar solo, Oh, I just love this track. There's another version of this track that features on the Let's Dance album, and while I think it's really good, I don't think it's quite as good as the original version. Uh, the live version also kicks ass. If you've not seen the Serious Moonlight tour on YouTube or wherever, you really need to check that out. This is a strange one because the song is not super catchy or uplifting, but the song probably has the strongest emotional weight of any other song on this list. Black Star was a record that meant so much to me during my teenage years, as I'm sure it did to a lot of other people my age, but out of the whole record, this is the song that speaks most to me. It's like a light at the end of the tunnel, a bittersweet poem to tell you that things will be alright. I also personally like it because musically it feels like every instrument is from a different era of Bowie. You have the techno dance drums of the 90s, the beautiful sax solo of present Black Star Bowie, a harmonica lick that's taken straight from the Low album, my favorite album by the way. Top it off with a Ziggy-esque rockin' guitar solo, which I find hard not to get teary-eyed at. It's just a very well put together song. Like the harmonica reprise suggests, Bowie has a new career in a new town now. And this album embraced that with no fear. What a way to go out. There are a lot of songs I knew I'd have to cut, and some that might surprise you, but I just couldn't get rid of this song. This track means a lot to me personally, as it was my introduction to what suicide was when I was very little and I've always loved the music and the video. It's really hard to explain what makes this song amazing to me. There's just something hypnotic about it. I think 90s era Bowie had a lot of problems with sounding too unpleasant and cold when trying to experiment with new ideas. But this song I feel like is the one beautiful sounding track to come out of that chaos. The programmed percussion mixed with a soaring sax that sounds more like a guitar. A trumpet solo from jazz player Lester Bowie. This is just one of my favorite songs by him. It's sad, it's chaotic, it's frightening, but beautiful. This was the Top of the Pops performance that got David as well as Ziggy Stardust in the public limelight and stopped him from being another one-hit wonder. To be perfectly honest, I rank this song kinda low because it's just not one of my top favorites like other people. It's not that I have a problem with the song, it's literally just that I love other songs more. With that said, this song is still magnificent. 
As usual with Bowie's early period, the chords are just brilliant. Musically, the song is so simple but has so much going for it. The Wizard of Oz inspired chorus, the swaying guitar riff, that little da -da 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 -da. The best way to describe the song is just magical. This is an unusual gem, a non-album single. It's a song that I almost forget about while going through his discography, and boy was that a mistake. This song is so brilliant. To me, it captures the feeling of loneliness or longing for affection perfectly. The lo-fi production helps to that kind of underwater, trapped feeling, with aggressive drums fighting against that. The song features a really cool walking bass line and some of the coolest sounds Mick Ronson has created. That outro is just a moment of sheer beauty. Top it off with another beautiful vocal performance from Bowie. It just works. If you're looking for an underrated masterpiece, look no further than here. Ah yes, Bowie's first song would go number one in the US. Young Americans was a huge hit over there, and while I don't think the album as a whole is great, the final track will always be a standout. The song is a perfect culmination of Bowie, Carlos Alomar, and John Lennon, with the three of them throwing around different riffs and vocal lines. The song has this looseness to it, yet it feels very tight and groovy. Speaking of groove, Something I never noticed before, but is now my favorite part of the song, is the drums. The drum rhythm going is so cool and catches you off guard, like he's holding you by the edge of your shirt or something, I don't know what I'm talking about. I actually remember hearing the 90s remix first, and while I have a soft spot for it, it will never compete with that original track, that backwards guitar that brings you in the... Yeah, it's just so good. I'm just gonna say it, Aladdin Sane is better than Ziggy Stardust, don't at me, and it's a shame that many of the songs from it weren't big hits, otherwise they'd make a good quarter of this list. However, the Gene Genie is not only one of the best songs from the album, but the biggest hit from it. So if one song on this list has to represent this album, I'm glad it's this one. The 12-8 rhythm is bouncy and thudding, the guitars are just brilliant, that opening it's just brilliant. The iconic riff throughout that song to the tasty chorus riff that it's just brilliant. That shredding solo at the end. The song is just a classic. It's just a classic song. Add a great sing-along chorus and a tasty harmonica to top up this great track. You get a great track. Damn, I need to get better at writing these scripts. Okay, Station of Station is just a masterpiece. It's only six songs long, yet all six songs are great, and it might even be on par with Ziggy Stardust in terms of how it maintains its quality while building a new character. It takes the elements that worked in Young Americans and played with them in a way that is almost avant-garde at times. Golden Years, I feel like, is the perfect summary of that. You have a nice, tightly performed song that could very well be on Young Americans, but there are all these little nuances that make it more interesting and more memorable than anything on that album. From the amazing riffs being shared between Earl Slick and Alomar, Bowie's beautiful voice that ranges from harsh to soothing, that melodic descent, the go, oh, oh. it's just... Oh, it's beautiful. His backing vocals and the friggin' melodica, a melodica in, in this song, like, this, this song's just brilliant. Surprisingly enough, Rebel Rebel did not make it on this list. I don't know, maybe this is a hot take, but I just didn't think that song was that great. It's it's fine, you know, it's got that really cool riff, but to be honest, there's nothing else to it other than that riff. Kind of just meanders until it's over. No, the real standout was the song they put on the B-side of that single. Queen Bitch 
is honestly one of the most underrated Bowie songs ever. And the fact that it's a B-side to one of his most iconic songs makes it more than eligible for this list in my opinion. A tribute to the Velvet Underground, this song just feels like a precursor to what people could expect to see on Ziggy Stardust. A glam rock track influenced by American hard rocking acts that combines acoustic and distorted guitars with a riff that is almost like an early punk song. The track is just a gem and one that I feel should be brought up more when discussing Bowie's early music. I've noticed that because Let's Dance is the most successful Bowie album of all time, people kind of write it off as being a sellout, like this is when Bowie started getting bad, but I'm sorry, there's a reason why this album was so successful. Because Let's Dance is an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, I always cringe when this album gets lumped into the same category as Tonight and Never Let Me Down. Arguably his two worst albums that even he himself dislike. This song in particular just has so much going for it. The incredibly jazzy chords, the pristine production from Nile Rodgers, and Stevie Ray Vaughan's amazing guitar solo. If you want to find out more about how much this song rocks, check out Rick Beato's video on it, but you probably already have. That guy is really cool. For me, this will always be one of the best pop songs ever written, and shouldn't be ignored just because it's off what many people see as the start of his... Phil Collins period? I hate that name so much. He wasn't even the one that ruined Genesis. How could I not include this song? It was in Shrek 2! It's funny how I hated this movie as a kid because it didn't have David Bowie singing in the film, but I didn't realize that he actually is in the song and that I'm just an idiot child. You know, all that familiarity stuff. This is just a perfectly constructed pop song. You have non-diatonic piano chords that keep this from being a simple C major piano pop number. You've got a tasty sax introducing and exiting the track. The guitar is surprisingly absent, following the bass instead, but it helps to give the song more of a melodic punch and a thickness to it. Top that off with a really unusual chorus that has extra bars and a beautiful back and forth between the lead and backing vocals, kind of gives it this full circle feeling. On top of all this, what makes the song work so well is the profound lyricism, the message of youth changing due to the world they're growing up in, is something that anyone can relate to, whether you're a grumpy old baby boom or a loser woke Gen Z kid like I am. The song is just timeless. Right, you guys are really gonna hate me for this. Not only did I put a song from Tonight, regarded as one of his worst albums on here, but I just put it higher than Changes, Let's Dance, Golden Years, etc. Anyways, ignite your pitchforks. Loving the Alien is one of Bowie's greatest achievements as an artist and is a prog pop masterpiece. This truly is an example of a 10 out of 10 song on an otherwise 1 out of 10 album. It's 7 minutes long, but never overstays its welcome. The processed marimbas that on the rest of the album comes off like fake white man does reggae. On here, makes the song creepy and mysterious. There's this strange artificialness that just adds to the sci-fi nature. The guitar solo that closes out can rival that of Let's Dance, although not quite as good. The strong message of religious organizations controlling and altering history to fit their narrative, Bowie's emotive vocals, as well as that haunting backing choir that meh, 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 and the bum dum 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 oh, the, the song's just brilliant. I genuinely don't see why it doesn't make people's best lists when to me it's amongst life on Mars in terms of gravitas and scale. Please, just because it's on this album, do not skip this one. Oh, and Blue Jean's pretty great too. This is a pretty bad album, but I wouldn't even call it as worst. I honestly think these albums are worse. Far, far worse. Yeah, I couldn't make a best Bowie list without this song. Although technically not a single, the song is such a fan favorite that it is literally one of his most played songs and is on every best of compilation. The riff, iconic. The story, amazing. The production, 
beautiful. What else is there that I can say that no one else had? Well, maybe that I actually kind of prefer the live version. That's actually why I've marked it down a little lower as opposed to being in the top five or top three like most people. I remember hearing the live version first. It was the first ever thing that I heard David Bowie do. And well, I just think the song sounds better when it's faster and louder. The actual song seems too slow and acoustic to me, but I know that is just bias talking. The song is still fantastic. It's just that I grew up hearing other versions more and that's what I'm used to. It's still a masterpiece with one of the best, if not the best riff in any Bowie song and such iconography behind it. This is a classic and I can't ignore it. Ah man, the only hit song from my favorite David Bowie album, Low. While I love Low, very few songs actually qualify for this list, with there being more instrumentals and songs, and then this song being the only one out of its singles to get played or remembered by the public. However, it's also the best song out of the vocal track, so I guess it checks out. Anyways, Sound and Vision is one of the most beautiful tracks I've ever heard out of Bowie's single catalogue, and with the vocals coming in over halfway through the song, you're given enough time to really appreciate the beauty of the song. That tasty bass line, the drums that have such a heavy harmonic effect on it that it almost sounds programmed. The overwhelming synth strings coming in on the da -na 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 -na, it's just beautiful. The little moments like the do -do 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 and the saxophone. It's just a gorgeous sounding song with so many little moments that help elevate the song from being just a great Bowie song to being a really great Bowie song. This song barely qualifies on the list, but in my opinion, this is probably the second best song on Ziggy Stardust behind five years. Had that song been a single, it'd be number one on this list. I admittedly struggle with the Ziggy Stardust album sometime. I feel like it's a little overpraised when I think the albums that came before and after it are slightly better. But when I hear Rock and Roll Suicide, literally everything that people say Ziggy Stardust is comes through on this one track. The combination of guitars and orchestration by Mick Ronson helped to deliver the most emotional song on the album. Probably the only song on the album that could move me to tears. It's the perfect outro with a structure that allows for the song to just build and build. You never feel like anything is repeated. It achieves so much in such a short length that as soon as it's done, you kind of want to listen to it again. In my opinion, this was the best single to come out of David Bowie's most acclaimed album. A true masterpiece. Right, we're entering the top five. All five of these songs could have been number one in their own right, and it was really hard for me to sort them out. So if you want to make your own list in the comments or whatever, feel free to go ahead. Without further ado, here's number five. Guys, I'm sorry to bring this to your attention. The Nirvana version isn't that great. With that out of the way, this song is one of the most brilliant recordings ever created. Even on its respective album, it still stands out. All the guitars blend together beautifully in this folky sound with exotic percussion that are just as present as the drums. Throw in quirky synths and a flanger on the vocals. Yeah, just dab that vocal in a bucket of flange, why don't you? Flange everywhere. Now, but my favorite part of the whole song is the outro. The outro is where all these pieces come together in this long, frightening finish with a Gregorian-esque choir taking the music to a next level. You feel like you're being carried away to some other place, like an alien picked you up and kidnapped you. Crack in the sky and a hand reaching down to me. Nah, seriously, this song is just so well put together. And despite not being officially released as a single, it was featured as a B-side to so many other Bowie songs. And as much as I'm indifferent to the Nirvana cover, it did bring the song to a wider audience and got a bunch of 90s kids into Bowie, so kudos to them. P.S. I really like Nirvana. Before you get mad, I think they're amazing. I just didn't particularly like that cover. I couldn't think of an intro for this, so yeah, here we go! Heroes is a beautiful song. 
What, you want more? What do you need me to tell you? This is one of the greatest songs ever recorded. Don't let me tell you this, let Tony Visconti tell you. No, really, Tony Visconti has a whole video talking about how he recorded Heroes, and it's brilliant. To be honest, I've always liked this song, but it was never actually a favorite of mine. It wasn't until I saw that video that I truly appreciated how amazing this song is. Because the lyrics themselves, well, they're not bad, they're, they're fine. It's just a little cheesy, I guess. But it's the music. Oh my god, it's the music that makes this song so good. If this was a list based purely on production, then this would be number zero and it would beat number one. The only reason that it's at number four is that the next three songs I feel have more interesting songwriting. This song is six minutes and is very repetitive, but not in a bad way. The production and the performance makes those six minutes fly by. I just think the next three songs have a little more to offer in terms of chords, lyricism, and composition. Now this is what I mean when I talk about composition. Here you got a song so complex in terms of writing that people still to this day argue over what chords are actually being played. The song has such an outside of the box feel to it, like they're throwing everything into the ring. Rick Wakeman's beautiful piano, Mick Ronson's string arrangements and short but sweet guitar solos, the 2001 inspired bum 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 bum, the way the song's tempo and key move and sway with the song as if the song itself is alive and breathing, and then ending with a random studio noise and telephone like we're in pet sounds or something. The song is just a masterpiece in terms of composition. There are loads of videos talking about why this song in particular is so good. Videos discussing the chords and the key, the comparisons to My Way by Frank Sinatra, whatever the lyrics mean. And to be honest, I don't even know what they mean. When it comes to discussing these top best Bowie songs, I'm kind of just floored. It's like, yeah, of course this is on the list. Of course this is at number three. And it kind of feels like what else is there that could be number two and number one? Yeah, you knew this one would be here. You probably thought it'd be number one. David Bowie's first ever hit and regarded by many people as being his best song. Space Oddity is just a gem. Something I've always loved about this song, even from a young age, is the atmosphere. David had said that the astronaut in space imagery was a metaphor for loneliness and alienation, and I totally feel that. When those heavily reverb guitars start, the first thing I feel is cold. This is probably one of the few songs to have the stems available on the internet. And listening to the instruments individually, I noticed so many cool things I didn't before. The orchestration and the Mellotron, shout out Rick Wakeman, go together so, so well. The guitar solo performed by Mick Wayne might be one of the most beautiful and underrated solos in a Bowie song. The pickiness of it, the way it moves, the reprisal of certain licks in the second solo, adding not only to the familiarity, but a sense of foreboding when it switches it up. The down tuning of the peg on the last note. They practically invented the slow down effect. The story is so perfectly told through the mix of the song, the panning of the vocals and instruments giving a sense of continuing disconnect from major tom and ground control. My best friend always tells me to stop saying this because I say it literally about anything that I enjoy, but this truly is one of the greatest songs ever made. And before we get to number one, here is just a quick list of honorable mentions. This is a brilliant remix, nothing like the original version, but so much better. Another remix that's better than the album version. The Next Day was a great comeback, and while Where Are We Now was the song that got the most attention, this was the song I loved the most. A great song with two versions, both I like, just not good enough to make the list. Lodger is such an underrated album, and this is easily the best song. This is the only song from Never Let Me Down I can consider passable. This is a brilliant song. It sucks that the whole album gets put into soundtrack category when it deserves so much better. I have nothing to say for this song, it's just really cool. Also one of the first ever songs I heard, with some of the coolest chords on any of his songs. I took this off the list, as it is technically on a Queen album, but the real reason I took it off was, this is the greatest song I've ever heard. 
and including it would just make this list very boring to make. Bowie has loads of covers, some of them are great, a lot of them are terrible, this is my favourite. Again, if this was a hit, it would be top 10, maybe even top 5. Now I know what you're thinking, what song is possibly better than the heroes? Space Oddity, Life on Mars. Well this one might surprise you. It was another one of his hits to reach number one and has what many people consider to be one of the greatest music videos ever made. Of course, I'm talking about Yeah, just kidding. It's ashes to ashes. I don't know if this is a view that other people share, but I feel this is David Bowie's best song. Not only is this lyrically a sequel to Space Oddity, his first ever hit, an idea of looking back on your life 10 years ago and acknowledging your aging, a theme that is present in other songs on the Scary Monsters album. With a lot of these songs, I talked about how they take you to other places, how they feel larger than life. Well, for me at least, no song on this list does a better job at taking me to a completely strange and foreign land than this song. Not only that, but in order for this song to be number one, I've got to like everything about it, and I just love every single thing about the song. It's a drum rhythm, which I hear getting used all the time in 21st century music, giving the song a real timeless feel. The dun 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 dun. The backing vocals, which are just as present in the mix as the lead vocal, giving this really intimidating feel. That synth guitar, which is so ahead of its time. Playing a sampled guitar like hitting notes. I mean, what is modern pop music but finding a sample and just hitting a bunch of squares? Top all of that with a creepy chant outro, reminiscent of Man Who Sold The World, and a beautiful but disturbing synth solo. This might not be your pick for number one, but for me, I literally love every part of the song, and it has to be number one for me. Just, uh... Don't listen to it in reverse. It's surprisingly terrifying. Anyway, that was my list of my top 20 favorite David Bowie hit songs. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends who also have a really strong obsession with David Bowie like I do. I hope you all have a wonderful day and please leave a comment saying what other artist and band you would like to see me do a top 20 list of. I have some ideas of what I'm going to do next, but I'm not entirely sure. You all have a wonderful day and remember, frogs rock.